inside the carousel and you can film them downwards. What the? Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring and welcome to a pretty exciting video because a couple of days ago I was at our friends of Atomic to pick up some new parts for the GR86 and I saw that they have a draggy track app stand. Now most of you car enthusiasts who like cars and who are also active on social media like here right now have definitely seen one of Draghi products features over the last couple of years, mainly oriented at drag racing or performance analysis of cars in a straight line, uh, 0 to 100, 0 to 200 acceleration, etc. Even Matt Rimac himself used it to show the performance capabilities of Rimac Nevera last year, I believe, or maybe even two years ago by now. Mm -hmm. Oops, late start. So it is quite a trustworthy device, used by over 2 million track enthusiasts all over the world as of last 5 years. So I'm quite curious, I was quite curious and I am still quite curious to see what this track app is going to be capable of. So I reached out to Draghi and asked them like, hey, can we do some sort of a test feature because I'm really curious and they sent me their latest DRG70 GPS reception model. Now before we're gonna go in detail into this, when it comes to performance analysis and telemetry data, most of the track day, I wouldn't say enthusiasts, but even like more professionals, are using the traditional tools such as for example Race Navigator, Garmin Catalyst, VBox, and they're great in their own extent, but they come also with a couple of drawbacks. For example, they are first of all quite expensive, more than 2,000 euros sometimes or 1,500 if you have a base version. They are quite big and you cannot just take them everywhere. And uh, also some of them require a full hard wiring into the car such as the V-Box which we saw during the Porsche experience in Spa recently. It's not just like a quick solution. And finally also when we talk about enthusiasts who would rather save this money for their fuel, brake pads and tires for a track day, the big drawback is that they would like to share the footage that they have immediately with the rest of the world on social networks such as YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, etc. And to export the data from these hardware systems, it is actually quite a challenge sometimes for just the average user. Whereas here you have everything you need actually on your phone because this is just a GPS reception model that offers actually by the way also over 20 hours of battery life, the, the, latest, uh, the latest version of theirs. You just stick it onto your dashboard, it comes with two magnets and everything else is being recorded directly onto your phone. And then you can immediately share it with your friends or also on the Draghi ecosystem where you have the leaderboard and you can brag about your in the past 0 to 100 lap times or times and now you can brag about your certain lap times. Now for uh, the longer audience they know that usually I have the Samsung what is it, what is it? Galaxy S22 Ultra but for this video I will be using uh, iPhone 14 because the difference although Draghi is supported on both ecosystems of Android and iPhone. iPhone is supporting a better like an additional feature which is not available yet on Android and it's so-called dual recording which records not only from the well front-facing camera it also records from the well from the front-facing camera to show you what's happening inside the car. By the way we are here at Schnelle Schwaben track day because lap timing in TF or Tristan Parton, Nürburgring or public sessions is strictly prohibited. During track days it's also not really allowed but we asked Jochen the organizer of Schnelle Schwaben if we could have a play with the app and he said I know when you're not going chasing any lap time so go ahead Misha. Now I want to say also by the way when you have a lap timer running in your car quite often it's pushing the drivers to improve it and you, they're focused more on the lap timer than what's happening in front of them. So I do not know at this point if you can switch off the lap timer. But it would be good for future 
versions of the app to actually have it more in the background, but just show it you what's happening in front of you as a video reference point. And then afterwards you can do the comparison. All right, enough talking. Let's prepare the car, hop in the car, see what this app can do, cannot do, and looking forward to sharing the results with you. Now, before we're gonna go on track, let me walk you through the app's interface. So we open Draghi Lap. The first thing immediately, which is very convenient, that you don't have to manually type in the which track you're going to because everything is GPS based. And look, when you zoom out, you see all the tracks all over Europe. We are obviously here at the Nürburgring. You see Nordschleife. It shows us 10 different versions. Why is that? So let's open it up. You have Nordschleife, you have Nordschleife lap record, 24 hour layout, bridge to gantry, another Nürburgring lap record, Nürburgring Nordschleife, VLN layout. So all kinds of possible things. Also GP, the older GP and GP without Mercedes-Benz Arena. So all the possible versions you can select. Today we will run Bridge to Gantry because we can actually already see that there are a couple of other people. Oh, look at that, Seb Vittel did 744 with his Tesla Model S Plaid, that the car that we drove also earlier. <laughs> funny, funny. We're not gonna beat any lap times today, but it's still interesting to see uh, who did what. Now, that's the track we would use. You can tap connect to Draghi and then it should connect. Yeah, it starts flashing blue. So it is connected to our GPS receiver. Now, moreover, when we go to tracks, it's sending satellite data to Draghi. Um, you can add different tracks. You can actually add your own track. So if you have, you go to Monaco, for example, do a street circuit, or you have some other local closed track, don't do takeovers. These are stupid, these are lame, go to real tracks. So, but you have possibility if there is a new track being built that is not here, you can configure one your own. When we go to the feed, uh, you can see who did what recently all over the world. Uh, maybe you can also add some friends to follow, for example, that could be a nice feature. And then finally, of course, you have your own profile that shows what you have done. You have this history. So for example, yesterday we did actually two laps in stormy weather just to make sure that everything would be working for this main video. Garage, where you can add your cars. Ah, BMW from 2016, because we did actually already some uh, videos with Draghi five years ago almost with Joe Achilles in the winter. So all your profile that you used for your Draghi drag racing app is automatically transferred into here. Very convenient. Units, you can switch from kilometers to miles per hour and temperature for Celsius to Fahrenheit if you would like to. And then settings, uh, the account, disclaimer app, and that is kind of it. And then of course your name, and I should definitely change my profile picture because that's one from five years ago. All right, so let's set it up. As mentioned, we're gonna be running bridge to gantry. One final thing to do is to stick this one on the dashboard. It comes with a nice 3M magnet sticky pads that you should put on your dashboard because then you have the best reception uh, through the window, so to say, without roof blocking the GPS reception. Just setting up the phone and I found one of the current downsides is that it does not interact this way. So the problem is the front facing camera is here. So if I want to record myself, it should be pointed like that. So it will be closer to me. Unfortunately, the screen is locked in this position. And now the screen lock is not on on the iPhone. So it, it does work, but it just doesn't work in the app. Yeah, so as you can see, it's disengaged. So I go to the app and it's fixed in this position. So in order to then have the face front facing camera on, I would need to put the screen more in my field of view or also it could be a defect of the mount. So you need to be really cautious with picking the right mount. So at this point we just grabbed what, the, what was available and it's, uh, it's not very suitable. It would be nice if someone could produce an actual mount for these kinds of purposes. Anyway, let's work with what we have and uh, see what we can get. 
we are set up and on the track so let's hit the record button now it's recording I guess once we pass the bridge it should engage the lap time or the telemetry so let's see three two one Ta -da. so the question is what can we do with it as of now actually not a lot it only shows us the time and that's kind of it Let's have a look what we have here. Let's go to our profile, to our sessions, and today's session. We did three laps in total, the warm-up lap, the hot lap until the brakes kind of give up, and then the slow lap to see actually how the de delta analysis or delta performance is working. Um, we can see our the maximum top speed, we can see the amount of laps, the best time, we did the sub nine, ooh. Uh, the, the actual lap times of each lap individually, the speed, the total kilometer per hour and how it differentiates, the acceleration in G's, the maximum and minimum, the lateral acceleration, the G plot, uh, brakes calculated because I believe later Draghi is going to release the OBD reader that you can connect to the app and then you have also the acceleration position the brake uh, pedal positioner sensor and a lot more data that you get directly from the car such as the temperature and whatnot altitude 586 meters difference of elevation change because as we all know Nürburgring is almost 600 meters difference and the weather very important the temperature of 16 degrees and humidity and also the pressure and density so for everyone who's going to be using any driver excuses such as like oh the track was too cold or it was too hot you can see if it was a bullshit or not uh, more interestingly is when you go to actually to play the video or your laps and look at that you can actually sc uh, scroll completely through the track and see how much how fast you were going through the certain corner how fast you were accelerating and um, that is that is the coolest part actually for me for data analysis to see what uh, what you are doing with your car and when you ex you can also have the opportunity to export this data file in VBO and then do a complete data analysis with the with the system through the software on your computer and go completely crazy now later in the future drag is also going to release a more extensive software which will be cloud-based so you can actually make the, um, the analysis and improve your laps and lap times and your driving skills 
uh, thanks to that, so you will not need any external software, so that's going to be very interesting. And finally, as mentioned, you can tap share and you can upload this, your performance. You can select the track, you already have it. You can add a picture to it. We should take a picture of the car. Let's do that while the car is standing there. Zoom in. So we got a shot, use the photo. Now it's there. We select the vehicle, we put it in the Toyota, done, and let's say something about it. Big Sand GR86 versus AMG, uh, yeah, AMG Black Series. That works. Done. All right, it's posted, so let's go to the feed. Oh, look at that. You see the picture that we took, the top speed, the amount of laps, and the lap time. And that's already someone else. When we tap on it, will it do anything? Ah, there we go. It will actually take you to the Nürburgring, and people can analyze my lap. So it seems they can see exactly how fast I was going through a certain section, breaking too much into Arenberg, lifting a mood curve, and then they can say like, oh, I was five kilometer per hour faster than you did. But then I can say like, well, in my case, it was 16 degrees. In your case, it was 25 degrees. So you had better grip on your semi sticks. Mm. So that's a very cool tool, again, for bragging and analyzing and learning, learning certain things. Last thing that I want to show you is actually the video, how it looks like, the layout. And it's actually pretty cool. So you can select the separate laps that it shows to you. The audio quality is quite okay, but most importantly, most interestingly, look at that. We have the lap times and the laps that we're doing here. You have the top speed, or actually the, the current speed, which is GPS speed and not based on your car speedometer. The G-force meter, again, the temperature and where you are and which track layout and the lap time and the inside camera and also the track map. And track map is something that actually been requested a lot by many of my followers for my videos. Like, hey, can you install something in it and put it in every lap? Like, not really. At the beginning of the video, I was complaining kind of about the car mount, but as you can see, it's actually not that in your face. It's actually quite okay. It's blocking the sky, so who cares? Unless you're going to use a driver excuse that like a UFO was flying there, you got distracted and therefore missed the braking point. Who knows? Quality is also overall very good. The only thing, of course, obviously you need to play a bit with the mounts to get the facing, the backwards facing camera correct set up to you. Uh, but that's something that uh, everyone can do individually and uh, my request to drag you would be if you can actually flip the screen so it will make your life easier with setting up the front facing camera. I guess that's kind of it. My coffee is finished. Let's give back the transponder and give you my final opinion. So. Quick verdict. First of all, massive thank you to Schneller Schwab and Track Day for amazing atmosphere, amazing venue for allowing us to test and tell you more about this amazing piece of equipment. I must say for $159 or euros, there's nothing like that on the market. As mentioned, most of the other systems are thousands of euros and definitely not this small. And in combination with the app that has worked seamlessly, honestly, we did not have it freeze today or whatsoever. It was working. So, it's perfect. I mean, what else should I say? Well, almost perfect. A couple of side notes, what I would like to see is actually, again, the removal of lap timing, that it does not in your face constantly, that you can actually just use it as a camera and see the lap time afterwards, so you're not being pushed by the app to outperform yourself and overdrive and eventually have an accident maybe even. That would be good. Uh, and also the possibility to flip the screen so you can actually set up the front facing camera to yourself. Very much looking forward to see when the OBD module is going to come out so you can even add even more data and customize it. But for now, again, I'm pretty much blown away by the possibilities for this. Obviously you need to buy a phone yourself, but the majority of us already have a phone. So. Yeah, this is something that I can use for my future videos myself because now we're working with four different GoPros and here you have everything just once and even more. GPS data, more data, all the telemetries. It's irreplaceable and uh, looking forward to be doing more with this. 
Fast forward to another sunny day here at the Nürburgring and Draghi has given me a better access to the lap timing analysis tool that I want to show to you how it's going to be available for you guys. So you go to the sessions, you pick one of your sessions, then you tap on your lap and you have already your lap with uh, all the data. We will add the comparison to it. So let's add the 918 lap, save. And now you have two laps next to each other. You see the videos directly next to each other. And most importantly, the speed, when you can scroll, you can see also your uh, track position. So we see that here we had to overtake a certain car. That's where we changed the position. The delta, so we can see that the delta, so the difference in lap time starts growing significantly. And this has to do, of course, in this case, because we're going flat out on the main straight and shortly after it isn't becoming this much of a difference and the speed of the two sections is actually pretty consistent with the exception of when i have to brake for another car for example in front of me and this can give you a very good insight to see when the delta between the laps starts growing significantly what happened shortly before was it the speed through the corner was it because you were braking uh, or accelerating less hard Oh, here, by the way, in addition, you can change this variable. So, for example, here we have the combined G-forces, but when we tap on it, you can do the longitude acceleration or, let's say, the, the lean angle. What's that? So, let's save that. And now we have, again, the differences between the... I wouldn't know what the lean angle is. I need some education. This app comes with more features than I can even comprehend. Well, that says a lot for just an app on your phone for track performance analysis. So that's kind of it. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this video and also give me a follow on Draghi so we can compare each other's times. And let me know also what you think. If you've been using Draghi in the past or currently using, what's your profile? Send it in the comments. And see you then. See you at the ring or at Draghi. Bye-bye.